day three of the national and day three of the chase. Good morning, anybody, and thanks for waking up with us. I'm Charlie Castro, alongside a few guests and my co-host, Mr. David Yarger. Good morning, David. Good morning, Troy. And How welcome are to our guest. Yes, of course. We have Shannon from CSG and, of course, chairman of CCG, Mark Salzburg. Good morning to you guys. How are you? Good morning. All right, great. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thank you so much for joining us. Now, a little something we like to do on the chase here on Fridays. Number one, it's Jersey Friday. Who are we wearing today? Uh, we're wearing a customized Cleveland Guardians jersey. Uh, Yagabomb24 on the back. My nickname, my Twitter name, whatever. What, what say you? He's kind of a big deal. Don't worry about it. Not the I got myself, I want to say, from the 75th anniversary of the MLB, a Jeff Bagwell Astros jersey. I mean, just a nice touch, right? Absolutely. Love the color scheme. Now, if you guys were to be wearing jerseys with us on the show, which ones do you think you'd go with? I would go with Bo Jackson. Nice. I love Bo Jackson. Now, Bo Jackson, Royals, or I got I to gotta put you on the spot. Royals, Oakland Raiders. Both. I'd, I'd wear his whatever. I just comment. we'll do a half. Yeah, we'll half, do a half, half jersey, yeah. right? Yeah, he's he's a superstar. Absolutely. What about you, Shannon? Red Michael Jordan. <laughs> Duh. Duh. <laughs> Base, baseball would be Derek Jeter. All right, right. Fair enough. I mean, with yeah. the popularity of the captain coming out, right, 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 right. The last dance but, and the captain. I exactly, see what you're doing here. Exactly. It's got to be Jordan. All right. Before we get into our discussion, one last thing to do. How are we going to start this off? How are we going to get motivated for this interview? Hey, you know, we always got to start off with some motivation for our episodes. So I found a quote personally for today, and here we go. Find a victory in every defeat to remain hopeful, and find a defeat in every victory to remain humble. And that's Oren Woodward. Mm. I don't know who that is, but that's a great quote. Wow. He said it, he said it best. You did pretty good, <laughs> but I think he said it best. Yep. All right, now let's get into it. Guys, What's going on? It's the National back in Atlantic City since 2016. First time. How you guys feeling? Uh, well, this is my first National. Um, I've never been to one. Um, and it's, it's pretty chaotic and <laughs> pretty crazy. So we have a fantastic display here. The, probably the best uh, memorabilia collection ever. And really excited about displaying it. We have an unbelievable... Uh, one one holy grail out of six holy grails sitting here uh shannon knows all about sneakers so she'll explain what we're looking at but the display is causing a lot of uh excitement and it, it, we couldn't be happier now first national why is that because i know but for the folks at home your background in coin grading yeah. and also in comic grading. So why don't you share a little bit on that? Yeah, the reason I haven't come to a national, I've been busy for the last 35 years. We, we, I founded Certified Collectibles Group, uh, which was founded with uh, coins, certified, uh, impartial, guaranteed, encapsulated. Um, we really set the standard uh, for, for certification. We replicated that model with comic books in, in 98. Uh, it's been a home run. We graded over 10 million comic books, 55 million coins. Uh, we're worldwide, so it's been really, really busy. And recently, we launched CSG, um, and uh, that's taken off. We graded our millionth uh, card, and um, this is just a fantastic way to to celebrate our millionth card. Is to bring um, Michael Jordan's game, you know, game worn championship clinching game worn sneakers, all six. It's hard to get your head around, mm -hmm. and uh, there really are six holy grails. All of it is, is, is hard to comprehend. Absolutely. Yeah, so I got to ask, what was the millionth card? Uh, some Jordan card. She knows what it is. Yeah. It's, it's great. It's unbelievable. Tens of thousands of dollars. And it's in, it's in our case over at CSG. So everyone can come over and check it out. Awesome. So you guys, what's going up or what's going on with National this week? And what are you guys uh, bringing to the table? Well, like Mark said, we've got all six championship clinching Jordan shoes. We also have uh, daily giveaways, $1,000 card each day. So you come in, register for that. We also have a, a card that you can, um, a giveaway for a $10,000 valued card as well. We've got lots of swag available for everyone. So come on down, get your photos, get 
And we have a Papa shot too. So if you want to put up your, you know, Jordan skills as well, you should come on down. Really? Yes. What do you say? One v one. One v one. Why is it always a competition between us? It's everything's a competition. All right, fair and enough. Winner gets a prize. Winner gets a prize. Winner gets a prize. Ooh. Well, it's good content. I think we got to do it for the camera. We do. <laughs> now, as you'll see here, I have the Dynasty Collection. Mark and Shannon here just talked about it a little bit, but why don't you just give us more a little bit in detail of what we got going on here, Shannon? So the six championship sneakers, obviously Michael Jordan, iconic, you know him, you love him. And we're starting with the Air Jordan 6. So this is, I mean, he redefined sneaker culture, right? You know, for the past 40 years. So right now in front of us, it's the Air Jordan 6. And you keep going. I mean, this is against the Lakers. I mean, it was Jordan's first championship. You're playing against Magic, his last time in the final. It started everything. Yeah, yeah. And then you keep going on. You know, we've got from number of shoes. You've got 92, 93, 96, 97, 98. You have, you know, with the sevens, first time the Nike swoosh wasn't part of it. You've got the Jumpman logo in there that has become iconic in its own brand. And then you go on 93, 96, the, the 11s, iconic as well. I mean, in the last shot, 98, the yeah. 14s, and it's got that Ferrari look. I mean, they're so pretty. And each design, Tinker Hatfield designing these with Jordan, I mean, it was very specific. And that really set the bar kind of going ahead with other players kind of going forward and having their own distinct style as well. Yeah. And, you know, not necessarily based on story behind it, but just by look, aesthetics. Did you, did you guys have a favorite one of uh, just looking at it? Uh, you know, they're all, they're all terrific. For me, I love the, uh, the, the last one because of the, the, the design was off of the, his Ferrari. Uh, also was a prototype. So when you talk about that, it's like a combination of, of uh, you know, just so, so much goes into it. And again, these are, these are the Holy Grail, and then there's six Holy Grails, right? And the last one, I think, is the ultimate Holy Grail. Um, that, 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 to me, um, is my favorite. Yeah, absolutely. What about yourself? Well, I was wearing a replica of the sixes the other day, and uh, the Fight Club version with, you know, gold and black. Uh, uh, personally, I love the 12s. Uh, you know the Sneakers app, too. I mean, that, that's the other thing is... These are the originals, and then going forward, think about how many replicas you're going on the sneakers app, and it's like you're you're going on. It's like got him. Nope. I was trying to get the cool grays. Yeah. Kind of skip pretty, out on that. Yeah. Get it fast enough, but. Oh, we have another one here. Oh, yes. we do. Oh, What's yeah. better Can than one? That? What's better uh, than one? Mr. Two. Andy Broom, uh, <laughs> alumni of the Chase, by the way, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, he was one of our first guests. Now, which one do we have here? Thank you, Andy. Yes. Those are the 11s. Yeah, Andy. So these are the, the 11s. 11s. That's from 96 when Jordan came back. And, you know, so many people have come through the booth. They're identifying that one. That's the one that really hooked them in. You know, when you, during the season, he was wearing kind of the white and black version of them. And then sure. with the playoffs, here comes the red design, too. I mean, remember, too, like boys to men, they were kind of wearing the white and black version, these kind of tuxedo shoes. And think yeah. about how many people now with suits, they're wearing sneakers. Right, with them. right. I mean, it kind of all kind of comes back to that. Time. Yeah, it didn't just transcend sports, but just really fashion right. in, in right. general there. They're fashion statements. Absolutely. Yeah, and actually, I think our audience will understand the boys to men reference, <laughs> which, is, which is good. I don't think we're dating ourselves. No, today, this huh? is my era. <laughs> I, I, yeah, there you go. So... I got to say, my personal favorite is 1997, just because I'm a gray and black kind of guy when it comes to shoes. But I got to ask, what was your reaction when this collection all came to fruition? Yeah, it, it's, I've had the luxury of sort of comprehending it for the last six or eight weeks. When it was presented to me, it was brought actually to my home. And I, I couldn't understand really what I was looking at here uh, initially, because they, they, how do they exist? What was the story behind it? I've learned that there's, you know, there was a real appreciation for the person he gave it to, love. There was superstition. Um, so the reaction was sort of overwhelmed. And I was like, at first, like, oh, it's six, you know, signed shoes. And then there's six championship clinching game shoes. Like, how did that happen? And then I saw the photographs um, from the archive of him doing an interview with one shoe on, one shoe off. 
I saw photographs of him actually having his arm around somebody who he was giving him to. All of it took me time to comprehend. So if we took one shoot of the show, I think people would be like, cool, I remember that game. I remember that move. But when you have six of them there, it's really overwhelming. And then I'm an art collector, and I also obviously collect coins. And so, the, so think about a piece of art. You see a piece of art, and it, you know, it's, it's kind of, you look at the subject matter, and it's kind of static. And you go, wow, that's incredible. And I look at these, and I just think the design is fantastic, and I think they're beautiful. And then I, I think about the, the background of them. Like, he made that move against Brian Russell, or he did this, or he did that. Where was I? You know, I, I remember him when I was younger, obviously. I went to a game. I was lucky enough to go to a game and, and watch him play. And it's, it's, it's just less, like there's that, those guys and then there's him, right? And it was all, and all of that came rushing back. And I think these transcend art. And I think these transcend um, so much more. They evoke so much more emotion. And that's the, the trend that's happening here with uh, these type of items, these, these great iconic uh, mem pieces of memorabilia. The reason they're bringing such high levels is because people are, can make a connection to them. Um, so, you know, re somebody offered eight figures for one of the sneakers here. So unbelievable. Like, yeah. think about that. Comprehend that. And, and I was talking to somebody else about this. If you have all the money in the world, you couldn't buy these. You can buy Medigliani, you can buy a Van Gogh, you can buy a, a Degas, you can put them all up, right? But if you, how do you put this together? How do you, how do you accumulate this? So this had to be that kind of interaction, that kind of superstition, that kind of love. Um, that's what brought it together. And then, and then if you think about it, how does somebody wind up with them? And then you have this in your home. Let's say you're one of the richest guys in the world. You have this in your home and yeah. you have all these things on your wall. The only thing you're going to remember when you leave that guy's house is those six shoes. <laughs> so that's that's what's that's what I think is happening in the in the, uh, in the memorabilia world, and and that's 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 how I feel about this right now. It's a little it's a little hard to get your head around. It takes a lot of time. Yeah, definitely some some processing to do there. Right. Uh, absolutely. And I feel like for you and I, we were both very young when Michael Jordan was winning championships. So like, but at the yeah. same time, when you say, you know, it brings back moments, it, it, it evokes emotion. It, honestly, when I look at these, I think about 2020, when I just sat down every Sunday night and watched The Last Dance. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm sitting here like looking at these and I'm like, wow, like The Last Dance, I watched him, like he literally wore these. He clinched titles and, yeah. and it's just like, it, it really is hard yeah. to wrap your mind around. Yeah, impossible moves. Um, you know, and he started an industry, I, I, I call it a SIG series, like he, he started a shoe industry, right? He's multi-billionaire because of it. And the, the industry from is 50, 60 billion a year, the sneaker industry. So think about the impact he's had, the longevity, and also he's, he's, he's now considered the, the greatest basketball player of all time. I mean, in my opinion, you know, it could have been LeBron. But it's not LeBron. It's him, and so that's my opinion. And I and and I watched him at a at a in Madison Square Gardens. It was a playoff game against the Knicks, and he stole the ball. He went up. He missed the dunk, and the whole everybody went Michael, Michael, and he had a look on his face, and he turned around and uh -huh. crushed the Knicks right mm -hmm. after that. Like it, he was superhuman. So those were the best stories too about Michael, where guys would get in his ear and the next thing you know he's dropping 55 points on yeah. guys and it's just yeah. like you didn't talk it's smack to Michael. oh he took oh, <laughs> yeah and, for sure and i took it personally and it, nobody was as petty as michael jordan i think he was a competitor that's blasphemy <laughs> that's blasphemy i mean petty in the most respectful best way he's competitive possible. so competitive he, he didn't have and he he had the confidence and the swagger he, he just could could do whatever he wanted and you Absolutely. wanted to be that guy. You want to be like, how, you know, I, he emulated like the greatest persona. It was, uh, it was amazing for me. I mean, I was of that era where I, I was actually able to watch him live. Yeah. It's fantastic. Now, I wanted to talk about you as a collector yourself a little bit. You know, I know you're talking about transcending uh, arts, but you know, in, in the coins and in, in the art pieces that you have. So are there any in your collection that, you know, hold that sentimental value and stick out to you more than others? 
Well, in my collection, I'm a specialist in, in coins, so I know the background of them. But I'd have to explain to you when I show you a $20 gold piece that there's only 18 of, right? Or that's the finest known. These, you don't have to explain, right? These you, you yep. look at and you just smile. And you go, you just remember what, you know, what you, what you know about Michael. So, yeah, there's a big difference there. But um, the commonality between my collection and these is that I collect freaks of nature, rare things, things that shouldn't exist from an era that, you know, limited vintages, very, very, very specialized. So um, that don't get any more specialized. So it's hard for me to, I think I've thought about this, like how do, do I have anything that's comparable? Yeah. And there, there is, but it, it would take me time to explain it. Sure, sure. Which means these are better in ways. I don't <laughs> <Yeah>. know. <laughs> I, I think that the, as far as a long-term investment, those are the ones. Oh, yeah. Those, those because they appeal to 5 billion people. And the coins that I have, you know, there's like four weenies that understand what, what I have. You know? One of them was my no-no. You're my no no huge coin collector so he was one of the weenies that understood is what you that, were talking is about is that italian for grandpa it is okay it sure is yeah i know i forget i should have done this a little no no you know so my well, i just had a grandchild and my wife is no no so okay see yeah. see yeah. you understand i was yeah. gonna say you were able to process that you understood right away i'm doo-doo by the way you're doo-doo well we don't think she can say say do so she's gonna say doo-doo so, so doo-doo for so now. now so now my golf buddies call me doo-doo don't let Adam hear that. I feel like he'll start uh, calling you doo-doo, too. Uh, yeah, he calls me other names we can't say on air. <laughs> so go ahead, David. Did no, you have anything else? I was just going to say, Troy talks a lot with his hands. The I only time that. you don't see him talk with his hands is when there's a plate of food in front of him. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, then my mouth's full, and I exactly. can't talk. So, you know, that's kind of the thing. But let me add to what, to what Mark was saying. Is I never got to see Jordan in person, but it's of that era. And I look at these shoes. I mean, my... It's a mind scramble seeing these in person. And when you come to our booth, you see it in the case. But it's, you know, I'm hearing 6-6 six, six guard from North Carolina. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's Jordan switching from his right to the left for the layup. It's the last shot, getting the step on Brian Russell. It's, it's him against Barkley, Drexler, Sean Kemp. And my guy, Dead yeah. Love Shrimp. Uh, Dead Love Shrimp, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, then, and then Malone and Stockton, too. Yeah, and, yeah, and yeah. you just think about too. I mean, how many times there's the three peat, then the break, then the next set of the three peat too. I mean, it's just and when you look at the parades from Chicago too, it's just massive. And these are the things like my era. I'm 41, but this is just a childhood memory. And you hear Bob Costas doing the dramatic open, and then you hear Round Ball Rock going from you know NBC. Oh. And the thing about the NBA during that era. It was an event. All of these were big games that Jordan were in. And if you think about you going to a visiting city, those games are sellouts because of Jordan. Absolutely. And here he is rocking these shoes. Yeah. I like to add also the certified collectibles group, CSG, was able to photo match these because we were we had access to this incredible archive, the Bulls archive. And um, you know, it's in, the reason that somebody is willing to pay eight figures is because they feel comfortable that they're certified and that's that's essentially i know it's you know mundane but it's super important that supports this and supports all of what's going on out yeah. there in in cards and comic books coins so we're now applying that to uh to to great memorabilia and these are the these, you couldn't have a better launch for for csg to certify uh their their, their first um first pieces now, obviously, these being holy grails, as you had said, uh, you know, obviously they were before, right? But let's be honest, how much, if at all, do you think that the last dance actually helped these shoes just shoot them even, even more into the stratosphere? I think what it was is for people who didn't live in the era of Jordan. And you're coming up, you're maybe thinking LeBron, you're thinking Don, you know. I was going to say, yeah, five I, years old I, when he I, won his last you know, championship. It's been a few minutes since he last played, but I think what the last dance did and illuminated and confirmed, Jordan is the one, you know, and everyone after that wanted to model their game after Jordan. You're, you're, you're shooting hoops, you're thinking, I want to be like Mike, you know, and I think 
what the last dance did was kind of confirm it and also gave more of a holistic look at Jordan, the competitor, and the people he was against at that time, too. Yeah, yeah. I also think uh, he's one of the luckiest bastards in the world because we had COVID and there's nothing else to watch. So you're watching this, right? <laughs> yeah. So it's it's unbelievable. All of it's fantastic. Have the color, the background, learning about. I mean, he was just so honest about it, right? About, and I I happen to. I, I happen to know Dennis Rodman, and uh, I was I I had dinner with him many times and hung out with him many times, and you know just the I I, I thought that's that's very special, and to see him play and to have Jordan, you know, love him and understand the thing that I also understand is that Jordan was not only a, a, the greatest basketball player, he was the greatest general, the greatest teammate, and he was tough, but what he did mentally was. He controlled everybody the right way, and that's that's an artist in itself. You know, it's fantastic. You ever get to talk to Dennis about his blooming wrestling career in the no, late '90s? No, or or uh, Kim Jong Un. No, neither of those. <laughs> those don't come up we, at the, around did, the table. We did talk coins. We did talk uh, personal stuff. He he's he's a collector. Right? He's a he's a good guy. He's a cool guy, and it was it was just you know surreal for me to be around him. Yeah, absolutely. So, for you. So are we gonna try and get a uh, a pair of Michael Jordan baseball cleats next? You know what? I'm working on a few things. There's yeah. there's there are a few things behind this that, believe it or not, are gonna wow people as well. These are the ultimate, but there's things that are commensurate. I was gonna yeah. say it's this is a tough act to follow. It is a tough act to follow, but um, we're gonna give it a shot. Yeah, for sure. The other thing I would say too is. What we've noticed is people coming to the booth, it's like, oh, these are the game-worn sneakers. And then they see these great photos next to it. And it's like, oh, these are the ones he wore when he actually got the championship, right. when he won. That's the light bulb moment that people are experiencing when they come up, process everything that they're looking at. It's absolutely mind-blowing to see these in person. So I've been asking everybody who's been on, we're really in the back half of 2022 now. What can we expect going forward to the end of the year from CCG? Anything you guys got coming up down the pipeline? Uh, more, more of the same. Um, you know, just building our. Uh, you know, we're going to apply all the all the tools that we have from our other collectibles registry. We have a we have a footprint worldwide. We're we're in uh, Munich, Hong Kong, London, Shanghai. So we're going to continue to expand that footprint because this is a worldwide business, right? Yeah. There's collectibles. Uh, there's people who collect cards all over the world. Our trading card business, is, which is under CCG, is blowing up. So we're really pleased with that. Um, and these kind of these kind of events really help uh, the branding. So you know we're we're only in business a year and a half. We just did our million cards. So, sure. Sure. You know we'll re we'll revisit this, but I'm optimistic we're gonna be uh, we're gonna be more and more successful. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, now your take, your first national. I know it's only Friday. We still got a couple more days to go. But what do you think so far? Will we see you guys back? Yeah, of course we'll come back if they'll let us come back. We didn't piss anybody off. <laughs> I mean, listen, my word doesn't hold much, but I'll put in a good word for. Oh, you. Thank you. Yeah. You know, Adam might have a little more clout than, than you, but thank you very much. I appreciate it. Just a lot hair. more. Just the You're being way too nice. A lot more clout. Well, anything you left? Do you want no, to add this, anything? This has been absolutely fascinating. You've been staring at him. I yeah. see you. I, I, yeah, you got a little I'm drool. Just, yeah. And wipe it up a little bit. All right. Well, Shannon and Mark, I really want to thank you guys for joining us. Really appreciate you guys being on. Thank, Thank you. It's you. been a pleasure. Really, yeah. really enjoyed to, it. Make sure to come see your sneakers over there. I, you've got a nice view, straight shot, but you got to see it a little. Oh closer. yes, I gotta gotta check out the yeah. uh, the 1997s. Yes, booth number and all that for you guys, or for those of you who are watching that are around the floor. Yeah, we're in the corporate area, booth 1445. So come on over, see the shoes in person, and obviously we're doing on-site grading. Giveaway swag, everything you need, come down to our booth. Great. Well, thank you guys so much. That was awesome. Really thank appreciate you. it. Thanks, guys. All right. Do we have somebody to help them escort them out? <laughs> Not escort them out. That sounds terrible. But I want to make sure they get out comfortable. Yeah. <laughs> we gotta we gotta escort the shoes. <laughs> All right. All right, guys. Thank, thank, thank you. you. Really appreciate it. Thank really thank appreciate you. it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks. So we got a lot more coming up for you today. Uh, some big news.
Yeah, you guys, okay. whatever, yeah, whatever. <laughs> hey, it's all right. It's all live. We like it. Go ahead. Yes. But thank you guys so much. Really appreciate it. So day three. Day three. Yep. I was say, don't leave that behind. Yeah, don't yeah. leave it. I mean, if you want to keep Look it here. <laughs> yeah, right. For the aesthetic purposes, of yeah. course. So that was fascinating. Thing. That was fascinating. Like, th the entire time. Were you just thinking the last dance every time you looked at those? Yeah, yeah. No, like, 100%. That it was, well, because, you know, like I said, a nice pamphlet that we were given from Shannon. Yeah. Um, you, know, you know, open up here, and it obviously has all the history behind each shoe and i mean that was a fantastic series honestly yeah yeah i mean michael jordan like you said the holy grail when it comes to basketball and we had you know two of the six pairs of shoes here just absolutely outstanding um national's crazy man national's crazy it's crazy man it's it's a crazy crazy thing it's just crazy it's just crazy. so i want to get to a little something so stevens i'm glad the camera is on me i appreciate this so, you may have seen that ESPN, they put out a article here, uh, you know, nice, nice written piece on Drake. If you guys remember a few months back, he was chasing for that triple LeBron Logoman out of national, or excuse me, flawless, not national treasures. So it eventually got pulled by backyard breaks. Uh, you know, Drake was chasing after it for a few months. To no avail. But did you know that he had a break in Toronto trying to find it? Did he really? Yeah. Um I I think I was there. Were you there? What you you saw you saw Aubrey Drake Graham? Yeah, I did. Well here's the here's the the crazy thing is is look, I'll even show you guys, you know. I I, I got I have it up. I don't know if you can see that, Stevens, really well, but there is the article. I don't know why you're cheering, Stevens, but look. Great article. Take a look through. No mention of me. What about me, ESPN? I mean, listen, I know I'm not top guy, but I'm the host of the chase. Yeah. You know? I you mean, even, what's that? Yeah, I mean, John makes a good point. I was going to get to that point, a little long-winded, but... I mean, if I'm correct... How, how do you... Why are you on... Uh, uh, there you go. Oh, Why... Like, how do you think Drake got the product? Oh. My little, two, my little 2015 Honda CRV. I had about 10 cases of floss in the back. I'm going through the commercial lane, through the border, up to Toronto. It was me. I mean... And if I remember straight, was it not Drake, Ken Golden, and you? I, I was mean, there, baby. You want to talk about a big three? Yeah. I mean, that's the big three right there. Oh, Nobody, we, so. No, we don't need no Curry, Clay, and Draymond. We don't need no Bron, Bosh, and Wade. We got Troy, Golden, and Drake. Yeah, we were Splash Brothers in a totally different way. Yeah. But listen, I'm sure you guys don't believe me, right? You're probably like, yeah, okay. Hey. Dave, Stevens. Some people thought it was Photoshop, right? Haters will say it's fake. Haters but are your motivators, though. I really appreciate you guys thinking my skills on Photoshop are that good because they are not. They're absolute garbage. So there you have it. Me, Ken Golden. Oh, I went dark. Thanks. Me, Ken, and Mr. Aubrey Graham himself. How about it, right? Drizzy there? Drake. Just three guys being dudes ripping some sports cards. So, guys all being I'm dudes. ESPN is, you know. What about me? Come on, give the credit where credits due. I'll talk to you. You guys are floating around. You got ESPN around here on the on the floor. I'll give you guys a few words. We can chit chat. So, let me know. Let me know. Get uh, Scott Van Pell out here. Oh man, give me SVP. Some I love SVP. that. Some maybe some Butchie. Maybe I love Butch Gross, man. He's a big Buffalo guy, too. You he know, is. he loves he being loves there. Uh, so why don't we actually take a second while we got a moment and go to the chat a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. There was a big, uh, a little bit of a debate between the GOAT of Jordan or LeBron. So We had that going in the we chat. Do. So Billy Bob, 
Uh, 100, 894. I don't care what the position of your hands. LeBron. Goat emoji. I don't know, man. I I'm, mean... I'm gonna abstain from this. You don't want to talk about it? Even like, in like a... What, like, what about a card sense? Like, if you're collecting, who would you rather have? Would you rather have Michael Jordan cards or would you rather have LeBron cards? Let's be honest. Oh, man. Why you gotta put me on the spot like that? I Come mean... On. Michael, Michael's history is just iconic. LeBron is still playing, and his history can continue to grow. So I guess at the moment, Michael, if, if LeBron gets two more titles, three more titles, which is going to be tough to do because he's getting older, it might become LeBron. I'm just saying. I mean, it sounds like some people will actually agree with you in the chat, but I, I think still to this day, it's got to be... It's got to be Michael. I think Michael has the coolest looking cards through the years. Obviously, we, we don't see him. We don't see him much in products nowadays. So think about that, too, is LeBron, although he can't autograph Panini cards, he can be in there as an insert. Whereas Michael, you just don't even you don't even see him. So I feel like Michael's cards, too, are just so much more rare now. And we could see that. I mean, going back to the Drake break. We also broke a box of 1986 Fleer. So obviously Jordan's rookie year. Right. Um, and you know, if those get graded pretty high, those things. Whoosh, and we were hearing them, uh, we spoke with Mamba Carts. Yeah. And they were talking about how on the main stage they did a break, break of the 1997, I believe it was, Skybox. And those you're looking for the Jordan Precious Metal Gems. So people are still chasing after this stuff because I believe some of the green precious metal gems are still not accounted for. Well, one of our own who's behind this little screen is a big Jordan collectible or collector, I should say, yeah. himself. So And also I want to point out, don't you think don't you think what helps is Jordan's shoe brand? Because LeBron obviously has his own shoe, but yeah. at the same time, I feel like when you think Jordan, yeah, you think the six titles, yeah, you know, you think the last dance, but I also, the, one of the first things that comes on into my head is that iconic Air Jordan logo, and 100%. it's just shoes, and it's just, you think about that, and that only boosts value, especially when it comes to cars. Right, right, yeah, it, especially when it comes to cars, but I would agree with you there, I mean, you know, LeBron, great, he does have his own line of shoe, I'm sure they're fine, I feel like people do like the LeBrons, people do collect those, but... Collecting-wise, you're definitely going to see more people trying to get Jordans. Way more Jordans, especially... And I'm not even talking, like... I'm not even talking about those six shoes that they have on display over there, and we saw a couple of them. I mean, just Jordans in general. StockX and all these secondary markets now and all these sneakerheads. You know, they're looking for the Jordans. Nobody... I, you never really hear anybody looking for LeBrons right Correct. now. I could that could change over time. Yeah, that's true. And honestly, let's get the chat involved in this. Who do you think is the greatest athlete of all time? Just post who you think greatest athlete of all time. Let's just let's just kind of have a debate cuz I'm seeing I'm seeing all over the place. I see a Kobe, I see yeah. Michael, I see LeBron. You know who I even see? Joey Chestnut. You know what? Joey Chestnut very underrated in the athletic world. Major League eating champion. Hey, you got to agree. Somebody just said Vince Carter. I mean, if Vince you can Carter, make the argument. In my opinion, Vince Carter, his cards, dirt cheap, doesn't get enough love that he deserves. I love insanity, but that's probably because we're from Buffalo and, you know, we, we're right there on the, you know, the border of Toronto. Yep. And now we got more answers coming in. Tiger thank Woods, you, thank you, Mom. Thank you, Mom, for nominating myself. Not even close to the greatest athlete of all time, but Bobblehead, Bobble. I'll take it. Travis hey. Pastrana. There's a name I haven't heard Travis in a while. Travis Pastrana? Um, Josh me? Allen. Agreed. Tiger Woods or Gretzky? No other answer. Tyson? I like those. Those are very good. Mike, Mike Tyson? Tyson? Yeah, I'm the GOAT. Yeah, I'm the greatest of all time. I love this fight. Yes, I love to punch guys in the face. It's a lot of fun. Now Kith. Now Kith. <laughs> Tony Hawk, we're getting, you guys are all over the map right now. I'm loving it. I love the Joey, I love the Joey Chestnut answer. And actually, I was thinking to myself here, we were talking to Dats yesterday about Dodger Dogs. 
Yeah, do Dodger dogs and how uh, bad they are. Do you think, I was going to say, do you think Joey Chestnut just absolutely clears Dodger dogs like it's his job? Uh, he could probably take down about, well, if they're that small, as, as Daps was saying, he could probably eat about 150 of them. Okay, so Jihad here, he says athlete going down the line of athletes. Pele, Jordan, Ali, and Gretzky. That's so a good list. Like we're starting to get into a little Mount Rushmore. I know, that's a very good list, honestly. And yeah, four guys. So yeah, no, that's a perfect Mount Rushmore. I would agree. Yeah, absolutely. I, that that's a very good, you know, you kind of in, you're incorporating a lot of sports there. Soccer, basketball, you got boxing, hockey. I, yeah, no, I agree. You know, Bo. And it's just interesting, you know, as we do here on the chase, we try to look at everything from a collectible standpoint and obviously more specifically cards. But I feel like some of these guys you say goats. I'm interested. Like it, it's tough. Like does Tony Hawk have cards out there? If he does, I'd love to see it. I know, actually, this is a good segue. Leaf is here on the floor, and they have Pro Set Multi Sport that came out, and we talked about it last week or the week before. And I believe Tony Hawk is an auto in there. And he's got his own video game, too, so that's impressive. But literally, yeah, Tony Hawk cards, like that's, that's something you, like, you just don't see a lot of. Like, I, when I think Tony Hawk, I think Tony Hawk Pro Skater 2, great soundtrack. Just, that's what I think about mainly with Tony Hawk. Bro, I, I ne you never, I'm sorry, you, you, never really, uh, you never really put two and two together of Tony Hawk and cards. Like, it's just... I'm telling you right now, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater, I feel like we could have a whole other oh. episode on us just ranking the soundtracks. I think what we need to do one time is literally just have a TV right in front of us. Plug in the old PS2 and just play Tony Hawk Pro Skater. We'll have a camera facing us and facing the TV. Why we'll just sit there. The, I think Dave just wants attention and he wants me to bring up the fact that I'm also going to break his fingers on the soundboard again. HR. HR. Call HR. They're not here. Do I see him? I don't see him. Oh, Dave just put his hand out. I don't know if you guys can see it. I don't know if you guys can see Dave's hand behind me. Um, Master Zen, though, says that's the best game. He says Tyler Prigionari is the GOAT. The GOAT of producing. <laughs> oh, hey, Bobblehead Bobble actually made a good point. The Jackass cards, I forgot. He's actually yes. in that set in an all right. with Tony Hawk. Um, which is awesome because if you guys are here, booth 1420, we're selling all sealed wax behind me. We got a huge booth. We're doing giveaways as well daily. But... Uh, we do have the Jackass stuff actually available. We have the Zero Cool Jackass out here. Not sure how much we're pricing it for, but it is there. So if you are around, come check it out. Test your hand. See if you can pull that Tony Hawk auto. Yeah, give it a shot. You never know. What else we got here? Jordan, Matt. A lot of folks in the chat, too, just want to say good morning to you guys. I know we necessarily haven't had a chance to really say good morning to everybody. Um, but thank you guys for being here. I see you guys supporting us uh in today's show and really we got a lot of chitter chatter we got a lot of active uh don't forget though too the boys will be breaking later aka steve and pete right now beautiful he's been escaping me here we go we're, get, been we're getting a very special guest right now. Just bring, so those, you guys know. bring those lobsters over here. Bring those lobsters over here. <laughs> the lobsters. Show them the band that you're supposed to wear with them. Oh my gosh. Where's the band? The band that you're supposed to wear with these sneakers <laughs> falls off. How much do you hate me right now for Lots. making you come on here? Lots. Lots. I'm going to hear it after this, but thanks for finally joining us. I think I paid for this. The whole thing. The whole thing. Believe Us, so, yep. me, the, the, this is it. This yeah. is it. Yeah, yeah. And all we got, you paid for all this, and all we got you was this Chase hat. Thank you for that. I'm, I'm flattered. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Well, this hat is pretty I mean, this cool. This is already mine, isn't it? <laughs> Technically. Okay, anyway. So I just re-gifted it to you, basically. What do you want to talk about? I'm filler. I was glad you said that. So we did actually have a couple of questions prepared for you. Okay. Nothing crazy. All but right. National hasn't been here since 2016 in Atlantic That's City. Right. So yeah. how does it feel to be back? Uh, I love the convention center. Um, personally, I like the uh, area around the Chicago Convention Center better. 
for bars and restaurants and having fun. Sure. But um, this convention center is better. It's bigger. So we have more attendance this year than last year, which yeah. is surprising. But it doesn't feel like it as much because the building's 20% bigger or something mm -hmm. like that. So. Which is funny. I feel like I noticed that, too. This is also my first national back since 2016. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it felt so much bigger uh, than Chicago. So I, I was like, you know, I had the jaw drop, honestly. Yeah, I got to ask, you know, I'm very excited. It's my first national. So... I got to ask, what are you looking forward to the most from this national? So this is my 30th national, so I don't want to sound jaded. Um, but for me personally, uh, and I think you should ask this question of any people you get on here. Sure. Is uh, I still walk around looking for things that I collect. Uh, I had so much fun doing that on Wednesday before the show opened. And uh, I just did it. was doing it right until I got on the set here. Nice. Because if you collect cards, memorabilia, anything in sports, where would you rather be than right here, right now? There you go, Marv Levy said it best. So, All right, guys. This is a great show. Great spot. So we actually got a chance to talk to some people on the floor yesterday about what they were looking forward to, right, for the National and just seeing what they were doing. We talked to the VIPs. So, Dave, if you could please roll that right now, we'd like to show you that with the audio. We're here on the floor. We're going around talking to VIPs, and we just want to ask a couple questions. First of all, what's your first name? Robert. Robert. So, first, I want to know, what's the first thing that you have done or are going to do here on the floor? I already checked up, like, Panini and what the specials they've got going, tops, upper deck. So, I wanted to get the big guys out of the way, and then... You know, as the days as the days go by, I'm gonna start looking for value boxes and some other good deals and stuff like that. Can you just say your name along with your great jersey? Matt Jones, Josh Gibson jersey, baby. Awesome. That's a sweet jersey. I gotta ask, is this your first national? It is. It actually is. Awesome. So what's the first thing that you did as soon as you walked onto the national floor? I walked in and I uh, bought a Bob Gibson rookie card, the first first table I saw. What's the first thing you guys did when you came here? Meat. To go eat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we went to go eat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Food. Hey, hey, you can't, you can't go get cards on an empty stomach. I mean, it's just proven. What was the first thing you did when you walked into this one today? Went wow. It's, it's kind of overwhelming. It's a beautiful space. I think a lot of companies did a great job with their setups, and uh, yeah, it's just I'm happy to be here, man. It's gonna be fun. What was the first thing you did when you hit the floor? Just looking for wax, honestly. That's why I'm here. Just looking for the best deals on wax, searching the tables around, you know, exploring. What's the first thing that you did when you walked into the floor on uh, in Atlantic City? Game plan. I was like, all right, we're not going to stop at a table, take too much time. Let's just walk, do a loop, get a whole sense of the thing. What's the first thing you did on the floor when you got into the show today? When I got into the show, the first thing I did was get in line for autographs because it's the, the longest wait. So I'm a South Jersey girl myself. So and went over and got the Ron Jaworski, Greg Luzinski and Bernie Perrant autographs first and then came onto the floor. What I like to do is just walk around, kind of peel it out, see what's out there, see what's available. Every vendor's different and uh, check out the prices of certain things, uh, especially for the local teams, because I collect Philly teams. First off, what's your name, buddy? Tyler. So Tyler, is this your first national experience? Yes. Awesome. What's your favorite part so far? Well, I, my favorite part so far was buying a couple of football cards. So what's your overall goal? What do you want to get out of this uh, national experience? I want to have a lot of fun and buy some more cards and see what I can get. First day at the show, what are you guys looking out for? Uh, we're looking to pick up the goats like LeBron, Jordan, uh, Steph Curry. I'm looking for basically the same kind of stuff. I'd like to do more like trades into higher end stuff, add more value to my stuff to get it, you know, pump it up a level like nine Chrome Brady to a 10, you know, something like that. Any specific players you might be looking for? Um, Josh Gibson. Stuff's very, stuff's very hard to find in a satchel page. Any specific cards or anything you're on the lookout for this weekend? Uh, no, the thing I honestly, the thing I love most about the national being my second one is the human interaction. So being online and seeing people buy, sell and trade is the fact that I get to finally meet people um, and then have that relationship and then hopefully cultivate something more. So. Awesome. Awesome. So is there any specific cards that you're chasing out there when you look at all these tables? Like who's the car that you're going after? Uh, Herbert. Why Herbert? Is he your favorite? Yeah, I like him. You play football yourself? I do. Quarterback? 
Running back. Where? Okay. All right. Who's your favorite running back in the NFL right now? Right now? Probably Jonathan Taylor. Is there a certain player you're looking to collect for your PC or looking to flip? Yeah, so um, the player that I have PC is Baron Davis. He's one of my favorite players. I, I love the way he played. I kind of play similar to him, or try to at least. Um, but like my biggest buy, um, my the biggest person on my buy list is LeBron. LeBron James. I think his cards are devalued right now, and I, I think he's a buy. Any specific players you got, like for your PC or anybody you're looking to buy? It's Steph Curry. That's my man right there. Steph Curry. Chef Curry is definitely one of the guys, the go-to guys right now. Yes, sir. So is there any specific maybe player for the personal collection or team that you're really looking to get out of when you're going around the show? I am a Mike Schmidt fan for life. So I, I like to see what's out there, see what's new, see if there's something that I don't have or that's a unique piece. I'll go ahead and grab it. What's your overall goal of this trip? Just have a good time, man. Like, honestly, this is like a big Instagram meetup, right? Like for the hobby. So to see a lot of old faces, a lot of the international people who are here, uh, it's just a lot of fun to, to hang out and, you know, spend time with people that you normally just chat with. Because you guys were so gracious to join us, we have $100 in booth credit oh, for, for the Dave and Adams booth. So there you go, hundred dollars in booth cash. So we're at we're at booth four, fourteen twenty. So have a good one. So we actually have a hundred dollars to the Dave and Adams uh, booth. Uh, we're at fourteen twenty. So thank you very much. Absolutely, thank you for your time and for doing so. We just want to gift you a uh, hundred dollar booth cash. So thank you. So once again, thank you guys for your service, and we really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Have a great time. Thank you. So, just because he was so gracious to come on and talk to us, we got $100 in booth credit to the Dave and Adams booth for him. So, here you go. So, there you go. Uh, thank you. And we're at booth 1420. Yes, I'll be there. Absolutely. Thank you. Yep. Have a good one. And because you were so gracious to come on to our show, I want you to go buy some more cards because here's a $100 Dave and Adams booth cash. Thank you. We're at booth 1420, and we hope to see you soon. All right. Thank you so much. Have a good one, buddy. Thank you too. We got $100 in booth cash for the Dave and Adams booth. We're at booth 1420. We're right there. We're right there, Dave. You can see it. We're right there. There you go. Awesome. Enjoy, my man. All right, thank you. Everybody, this is $100 in booth credit to the Dave and Adams booth. Thank you. <laughs> no problem, buddy. Enjoy. Enjoy yourself. Meerkat, please. There you go, man. Hey. That's $100 in booth credit to Dave and Adams. No way. There we go. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yes, sir. Come and see us, all right? Yes, sir. Appreciate you. We got something for you, Mr. Meerkat. That's $100 in booth credit to our David Adams booth for you that you can spend. Great. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. No problem. Thanks for taking the time. What's been your favorite part so far? This interview. <laughs> <laughs> I'll second. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I am now joined by probably our biggest guest to date in stature and in name. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to introduce Chris Mullen, Mitch Richmond, and Tim Hardaway, also known as Run TMC. And I don't want to leave out my man Daniel here. Daniel, how are you? Guys, good morning. Thank you for joining us. How are you doing? Doing Excellent. great. Thank you for having me. Excellent. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, if I'm not mistaken, correct me if I'm wrong, mm -hmm. is this the first time that you guys have all appeared together at something like this since your playing days? Yes, yeah, this this is the first time we actually did a card show together. Uh, so, uh, you know, we're excited about it. Uh, we never never did it before, and so we've been having a great time. We've been here for two days, and uh, we're, having a, we're having a beautiful time the rest of the week. That's great. And is it one of those things where, you know, it doesn't feel like so many years have passed, like you guys just kind of picked up where you left off? We, we have the type of relationship where even if we go weeks or months without seeing each other, as soon as we see each other, it's like we saw each other the day before. Uh, it's very close. Ironically, we only played two years together yeah. with the Warriors. Uh, but our, our friendship, our bond, it's like a brotherhood. And this is part of an uh, incredible summer for us. Uh, not only getting together here and spending some quality time and hanging out and having fun, but more importantly, we're going to be able to celebrate Tim's induction into the Naismith Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame in September. So we're, we're incredibly excited for Tim. 
uh, a long overdue, well-deserved, greatest honor you can have it as an individual player. So this is kind of the start of celebrating Tim Hardaway. Absolutely. And Tim, obviously, congratulations to you. So how does it feel to, to finally get that accolade, you know, and, and, and join your brothers here? Yeah, you know, um, long overdue, but, you know, patience is a virtue. Um, can't control stuff that you can't, don't have no control over. But, um, you know, my buddies, they, they, they kept me going. They kept me uh, positive. They kept, you know, you know, kept inspiring me, saying, it's going to happen, it's going to happen. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But then it finally happened. But, you know, just, just like I said, us being around each other, no matter what, we always have fun. We always enjoy one another. And we always just, it seemed like, like Chris said, if we haven't seen each other in months, it's, and when we get together, it seemed like we saw each other. We were just together yesterday. Yeah, and I love that. You know, that's that, that's real brotherhood right there, honestly. So you guys had said you'd been here a couple of days. Um, what do you think? I mean, what, what, what was your reaction just kind of walking around the floor and, and, and seeing all this? It's a lot to process. Uh, it's a lot to process. It's a lot of stuff going on around here. A lot of good stuff. Uh, but this is what people do. Trade cards, buy cards, you know, uh, it, 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 pictures. It, it's a lot of great stuff here. And I'm, I'm, when I'm walking around, I'm like, wow. You know, look at that. Look at that. I'm just intrigued about a lot of things. I'm amazed about a lot of things. So I'm having fun just walking around looking at all the stuff that people has collected, people has for sale and people has uh, to show uh, what they collect all through the years. Yeah, what about you guys? Yeah, we're, we're excited. Uh, we're really excited about Flex. Uh, you know, we've been uh, on this journey with Flex uh, uh, for the past year. Uh, we're excited about to show our product uh, to get us an opportunity to, uh, you know, go in the past, reach in the past and bring us into the future into the digital space and so uh our partnership with flex man i think this is going to be something that uh going to be very special for us and you know give us a chance to kind of get to the young fans that really didn't see us play yeah and uh give us an opportunity to kind of enjoy that, that that new uh i think that new uh um, bang of a buck uh, that nba has changed you know what i mean so give us an opportunity to show the young piece but what we used to do yeah you know? yeah Absolutely. Yeah, I think we'll, we'll get into detail with Daniel Choi about yeah. the flex, but to me, I'm amazed. We were just talking off air a little bit mm -hmm. how something that is a, a hobby for most people, that they can organize this into a multi million, billion dollar business. And it just to me, what I like about it, it, it starts from passion, right? The passion of collecting cards or jerseys. Um, and I think when, when, when the athletes and the collectors and the vendors can get together and share, as opposed to how we're trying to figure out that dynamic where, yeah, we want to share our journey and our, you know, signatures and things like that, but we should all share in the profits as well. So figuring that dynamic out, so it's not, not an awkward type of exchange, sure. right? So we're all, sure. you know, so we're in it together, but to me. I mean, I was just telling you, look, look at this incredible collection of memorabilia, cards, and that this all comes together in one place. When, you know, when, I'm, when I was first introduced to this signing autograph thing, whatever that was, quite frankly, though, just some crazy people asking for autographs. There's a, there's a, there still is. Well, still yeah, but it's also a billion dollar business. Yeah. So you think they don't know what they're doing? They know what they're doing. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, we are going to get into FlexCon and NBA Flex and what's going on here with Daniel. Just one or two more questions before. So I don't know what you guys may recall of this, but I read somewhere that it was actually a San Francisco newspaper that hosted a Name the Warriors trio contest. Yeah. So is that actually how the name came to be? Like, how, how did that come about? Well, you know, um, the newspaper wanted to... Um, create a name for us and they had people write in names and we had this big thing where we turned it and turned it and we reached in there and picked out names we went through about what, 50 60 names and we was like no nah. chris was like throwing stuff and working out that bitch was like no nah, that's not gonna work and uh we came across run tmc you know and it, it just it just when we heard it 
it called right away. It did, I mean, right away, it, it, it called with us. And we was like, you know, we, we run up and down the court. We play a, a, a high-level intensity game. And, um, and, and and we beat people down the court, you know, just making shots, making layups, shooting the ball, and playing together. So um, Ron TMC just stuck with us, and, and it's been like that ever since. Yeah. Sir, go ahead. Yeah, I think it was uh, also... You know, we, we grew up listening to Run, T uh, Run DMC. Run, okay. Absolutely. So when you heard Run TMC, it really wasn't, uh, uh, you know, I heard that before, but you know, like Run TMC, it kind of really kind of formed our name and uh, it actually kind of matched so well with what we did on the court. So if, once we heard it, we know it was, uh, it was really a click in our brain, like, yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's the one. That's the one. Yeah. For, for, your, for your listeners and your viewers, I think you can actually pull up a video of that actual yes. selection yeah yeah hosted by the great steve albert who was covering our games at the time yeah right, right. you know marv albert's brother did yeah. a lot of boxing yeah. steve was a great great guy so he hosted the uh the name selection and as mitch and tim said there was a a connection with with, with run dmc of course little known fact daryl mcdaniel who was in run dmc was my classmate at st john's University. no kidding I didn't even know it at the time. And I don't know. If I didn't go to class, or he didn't go to class. But I never bumped through him in class. Right, right, yeah. yeah we did, definitely didn't bump in, into each other in the library. Yeah, yeah. So I didn't know where that was. Maybe out at the bar once. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Could be. So actually, funny you bring them up, though. Uh, true that they actually performed at one of the playoff games, yes, right? Did. Tim, yeah. Tim didn't like that. Yeah. Looking back. That was a big mistake, man. <laughs> big mistake. You know, we playing against the Lakers, tied at 1-1. We're looking to go up 2-1 at home. Um, Ron DMC come out, you know, and, and started introducing us. And, it was, you know, it was big. Don't get me wrong, it was big. But my focus was on Magic. And Magic got his guys together and hulled them, hulled them up. And I, I, I kind of knew what he said. I kind of, he, he said, like, you know, they making this out of a fiasco. They making this out of a concert. They not really truly into this playoff atmosphere situation of basketball. They trying to make a mockery out of us. Let's come out here and bust their ass. <laughs> and um, man, I tell you, they came out. It was like they was on fire. Yeah, Mac was coming out just throwing stuff, and, and they was running their offense. They couldn't miss. They just couldn't miss. We played great defense on them, but they was just at one of those stages. They just couldn't miss. And I so right then and there, I knew the focus that we had to get in order to get to that level. And at that particular time, we wasn't as focused as they were to make it to that next level. So when I said, when, when they, when, they, when we, that was a big mistake on our part, having Run DMC come and introduce us. Yeah. Who would have thought everybody would ever say that, that Run DMC was actually a mistake? Hey, man, what way the Lakers put it on us, it was a big mistake. <laughs> uh -huh, I believe it. I believe it. Now, you look at modern-day basketball, and you see a lot of these teams being built on big threes. And I know that the Warriors obviously acquired you guys. It was through draft. It wasn't through signings or anything like it is now. But to say that you guys are kind of a pioneer of almost that big three feel to a team, I, I, don't, I don't know about Pioneer because, you know, there, there's a lot of um, talk these days for whether it be talk radio, you know, TV, uh, comparing generations, trying to pick the greatest player of all time, which is virtually impossible. It's, it's more of a debate for just to talk, right? Like kind of on the bar stool, barbershop right? type yeah, talk. Yeah, yeah. So there's been great trios throughout the history of the NBA. Yeah. The one thing, ironically, Although, what happened with the Lakers, you know, maybe we shouldn't have done that. But having a nickname has led to the longevity of our popularity. Yeah. Because you think about it, to play two seasons together, not only be sitting here together, but still to be recognized by that name automatically 30-something 30, 30 years later is pretty amazing. So between the style of play, which is basically the standard style of play now in the NBA, which was not the fact when we played together. Um, obviously social media, and things like that. But I do think the name just has a, it just helped uh, preserve our longevity. Uh, but more importantly, 
the style of play that we played at that point in time. Um, you know, we all went on to different teams after the Warriors and had, you know, Hall of Fame careers, but were forever proudly and, and, and gladly linked together by those two seasons. Love that. Love that. Yeah. All right, so Daniel, I let you sit here long enough. <laughs> I'm sorry. I apologize. That's on me. So, on the NBA flex side of things, why don't you give us a little idea of what's going on? Like, not to throw all encompassing at you, but what is flex and what what are we doing here at the national? Yeah. So last year we launched Flex NBA, and it's a TCG with athletes, and we also just announced this week Flex UFC coming next and launching in November. Game feature is Flexagons. You buy, sell, and, and trade these. And we had five levels of chase originally in, in, in C Series 1. And we were like, we need to bring in the Legends because that's the number one request is yeah. when are we getting the Legends in? I grew up in the Bay Area, lived there for 30 years. I used to imitate these guys on the basketball court. It is a dream come true for us to launch the all-time great rarity level and the first ever legendary level of the flexagon wow we don't have commons in flex okay because we only have the top three four guys these are high quality pieces of art sealed in an yeah, acrylic right. all hand drawn so your your your, your pulls are all nice you know they're all nice their household names or their upgrades but we wanted to take it to the next level we wanted to go to the next level and we said how are we going to launch this and we got into connection with each other uh, after a couple meetings. It just felt right, you know, and it was an honor for me to, it, I, I sometimes have to pitch myself. I'm like, man, these, this front TMC right here, you know, and, and what better way to do it with this beautiful starter kit? They've been gracious enough to, to, to launch our first ever Flexograph. It is a blockchain authenticated signature, meaning every one of these can't be a forgery forever and ownership is tracked so that you know if you pick up one of these you'll be owner number one for the rest of time or at least until computers crash you know that's right. so that's really neat and when you sell it on ebay or whatever it goes to owner number two owner number three okay so you pick up the starter kit they're gracious enough uh to sign these right here live at our booth 11 40. we're also partnering with dave and adam so Obviously, you can pick it up here and also online. Yeah, dacarworld.com. Yeah, so I guess we are we're, we're, we're giving some through that channel as well, which is great. But uh, really, I think it, it's just a perfect way. And, you know, they helped me design the flexes. Oh, you know, so you guys got to say and how, that's and how right. you looked and everything you know, like so, that, right? So Chris won at Flatbush Avenue Funk, legend of the NYC streets, and God made basketball player. Those are his three flexes. You know, Tim's are, of course, crossover. Mitch is power and grace because that's the kind of player he was. He could finish, but he, he, he was strong. He could, you know, bully you on the block. So, you know, growing up watching these guys, it just made a lot of sense. And I couldn't be more thrilled than, than, than the, the reception from the fans and the collectors as well as from them. Nice. Very nice. So in terms of uh, national schedule, though, what do you guys got going the rest of the week? Um, with the gentleman here, and how, how are we doing that? Uh, well, we're going to do a, a, a few appearances at the booth, and then we uh, I think we're going to do a couple breaks. Uh, I know there's a there's a few more, uh, uh, what do you call these, live streams that we might take a look at doing. Uh, but again, just, just really thankful that they're here with us and, and, you know, letting people know. The one thing about Flex we're trying to build is awareness, because everybody who sees it is like, what is this? Right. You know, they're like, what is this? Right, right. But it's just creating that and... Uh, you know, this partnership is going to help that along the way. Which I'm glad you said that because I want to know, can you tell everybody at home and, and, and us here uh, a little bit how the physical Flexagon tile works in the app? Yeah, so you put the, you download Flex NBA and soon to be Flex UFC. You put the Flexagon right under the camera view. These things come to life. And if you pick up the legendary, which is guaranteed, by the way, in, in the TMC set, most of our packs are blind. But this is a guaranteed drop of the all-time grace and legendaries. You will see all three of them come up out of nowhere. A hoop will show up, and I won't spoil it for you. But some cool stuff teasers, happens. Teasers, teasers. So some cool stuff happens. It also works if you put all three of them together. The, the 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 mobile device reads it, and they will do. They'll run a play. Which is which is pretty cool. We you also have see, a, you gotta see it to believe. Yeah, it. you gotta yeah. see it to believe. I'm coming over to the booth. It's amazing. It's amazing. I'm checking it out. Uh, we also have a flex anywhere feature where everybody you 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 buy you collect 
you can put them in your house. Yes. And, and, and a funny story I showed Chris. That's a good mantelpiece. On yeah. Tuesday. And, and Chris, you want to share what, I, what, what, what we take? Yeah, Danny was showing me on his phone. I'm not the most te technologically advanced 59-year-old uh, in the world. You I know? won't hold it against you. But so it basically when he when he put the, uh, the flex on his phone i took a picture with myself in the lobby in my it was me and myself in my warrior jersey like okay. that card there so it's pretty cool right flexico and yeah. they're drawn to scale so they were exactly the same height so it was right there huh yeah. it was right there yeah, it looks pretty close unfortunately <laughs> right, right. no i mean me i'm vertically challenged all right i wish i had a little more height so what are you gonna do uh, so with all that being said, though, what what really intrigued you guys about joining the NBA Flex team? Well, for me, I, I think I, I've been playing video games you know, since I was a kid, and I still play you know, okay. video games. So I, I see the transformation of how the game has changed. We went from uh, playing football games to X's and O's to actually seeing live guys, live guys looking like it's real. And so for this uh, to take that next step, and you know that the generation, these kids grew up with a computer in their hand. We did. You know what I mean? So if I need anything, I probably could tell my, ask my son about it. Yeah. But I'm, I'm, I know how the game is played. I know how, how everything as far as augmented reality uh, is definitely a forming into something that's very special. And so for us to get to the flex, I think it was a, 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 you know, it was a it was a relationship in heaven, no question about it, that I knew about games. I knew uh, 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 how everything worked, so it was uh, exciting for me uh, to get involved. Yeah. Same Dave, okay, hold on now. <laughs> Two understatements of all time. Mitch was the mastermind behind us. He, he partnered with Daniel Troy and brought Mitch and uh, Tim and I in. Yeah. So he's the master behind, behind that. Okay. But when Mitch says he plays games, <laughs> okay, we were fortunate enough to play together. We're all great friends. Mitch, when I went to St. John's, came was an assistant coach. So those college kids, they're gamers. Yeah. Got college age, they're gamers. Right. But when we're checking in the hotels, before the players could get to the concierge for whatever gadget he needs for his hotel room, yeah, he's on first online, making sure he can hook up his travel case. Oh, you got it all. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh, so he, he's so serious. He was the mastermind, so he under he understated how much input he had on putting this whole partnership together, but tremendously understated how much of a gamer he is. So he he's he's got it going on. So what are we playing currently? What's what, what are we rocking? I play, I play all the sports games. Okay. You know what I mean? The fighting games, I'm still trying to learn because I, I can't shoot. The guy be right next to me. I try to turn around and I can't do it. I need an actual gun. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? But other than that, I play all the sports games. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Well, that's great. So one last thing I just want to, before wrapping up, is is there anything that you're going to maybe keep your eye out on? And if you see that it'll really speak to you that you might, you might buy anything you want to collect while you're out here? Man, it's a lot of stuff out here. It is a lot of yeah. stuff out here. Uh, it, everything has caught my eye. Nothing has like, oh, I need that. <laughs> Nothing has got me like that yet. But I mean, if I keep walking around, something is gonna grab me. You know, like you know, like you walking through a mall and you want something or it grab you. That's why I'm waiting on. I'm, I'm gonna find something though. Rumor has it Mitch is looking at that 1953 Mickey Mantle yeah, card. Yeah, I think I'm looking at oh, that. Yeah, oh, yeah, huh? Neil? And he's going he's gonna to buy it straight cash, homie. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> How about I saw you reading through? How about those Jordan sneakers? Yeah, we were checking them out. You know, Mitch was the Jordan and Dorsal. He played. No so, kidding. Yeah. Yes, yes. I got, a few, I got a few signed shoes for the man. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. No, but, hey, no big deal. Just saying. Just saying. No big deal. Yeah. All right, in wrapping it up, Daniel, anything you want to say? What booth number? What's going on with Flex? Booth Where can we find you online and on social media? Yeah, booth 1140, flexnba.com, flex underscore meta at all social media platforms. Uh, keep on the lookout for Flex UFC, our first expansion. We're looking to expand uh, in a lot of different directions, so it's exciting there. Again, first ever guaranteed drop, limited tier to the national 
pick up your autos everything else is blind this is your chance to get all-time greats and, and and legendaries for the first time ever first and chris day. i know you're a little bit familiar with the buffalo area so maybe one of these days we'll get you guys up there some wings and we'll have you back on possibly okay traumatic experience uh, last time i was in the buffalo area oh no <laughs> oh no niagara university we were ranked number one in the country and our niagara university beat us uh oh yeah you might not be tore the basket down yeah uh i'll come back up there man <laughs> i'll go back up there. there yeah i've been there i've been yeah. there we, yeah. we he played a preseason game against uh the nets and um uh, yeah i had some good really good buffalo wings there you there. go yeah, really See, really that's i'll show you the spots too though i don't want people are going to tell you the touristy spots i'll take you to the real no, 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 no. i didn't want to go to the touristy spots yeah, you don't them, want that i told them look where's the best buffalo wing now this guy this was like 96 97 so i don't remember but they told me the best buffalo wing spot to go to. Yeah, it was high. We'll was remind high. you. We'll, all right, yeah. well, we'll 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 jog your memory then right. a little bit with that. I have, what? I have family members there, but I never been. So Why not? Oh, it's too Is cold. it the snow? I knew it. <laughs> I knew you were gonna say that. It's summer, huh? Summertime, Summertime are great. In the summer. Yeah, yeah. The yeah. best two weeks I'm, of summer ever. That's it. That, that's what I'm saying. We get <laughs> we get nine months of cold, and you get about three of warm, and that's it. All right, well, thank you guys thank again. You, I really appreciate, appreciate it. it. So that's going to do it for us today on The Chase. We'll be back tomorrow morning with more great guests and more things to talk about here on the national floor. And one thing left to do, just remember, it's all about The Chase. We'll catch you later. Out. <laughs>